Hello everyone and welcome back to AWS Simplified. Previously I made a video on interacting with DynamoDB using its get item and query operations. Today I want to continue that and show you how to perform insert operations, so how to insert data into your DynamoDB table. So I've already went through the trouble of pre-creating a table here so we don't have to go through that step. So my table is called transactions and the only special thing about this table is that I define my partition key to be transaction ID. Before we move on to actually interacting with this table, I wanted to point out something and that is that we're not defining a schema for this table in the sense that we're not defining any of the other columns that are gonna be present when we insert our data. So this is in contrast to a traditional SQL database where you need to predefine the schema of your table. So all your columns and the types in a NoSQL database, you have a lot of flexibility. So you can define those columns and their types at runtime instead of having to do them in advance. So that's just something I wanted to point out before we move on to the next next up. So now that we've explained that, we're going to go over to Lambda now. So we're going to be interacting with our table through a Lambda function. So we're going to switch tabs here, going to Lambda. I'm going to be clicking on create function because we're going to be creating one brand new. I'm going to be calling this transactions uh, insert demo. And as usual, we're going to be using Python 3.7. And so this permission step, this is something you need to pay attention to. So in order for this example to work, you need a role that has a policy that is a DynamoDB put item permission. So that policy needs to be present on that role. And when you create that role, you need to associate it with the Lambda function here. So I've already pre-created that role and it's called transactions read write role. So this has the put item permission. And if you are using a Lambda, you also need another policy in order for it to work. And that's called a Lambda basic execution role. So if you aren't doing this from a Lambda, you would probably create a user and then you would use the same process. You'd create a role with a policy attached to that role and associate the user with the role. And then you would use your secret access key and all that jazz when interacting with your table. So since we're using a Lambda, we only have to worry about the role and I've already done this for you. If this is in any way confusing, don't worry about it. I'm gonna post a link to the policy and the role template so you can easily copy and paste it when you're setting up your application. So everything looks good here. Let's click on create function now. And the function was successfully created. That's great. Let's scroll down now. So we're in the code section. I'm gonna copy this out and I'm gonna be working in Sublime Text simply because I'm more comfortable there. Now let's get rid of some of this jazz and start with a clean slate and we don't even need JSON. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is import Bodo3. This is the library that you're going to be using to interact with DynamoDB through Python. And the second thing that we want to do is we want to create a client that is of type DynamoDB that gives us the ability to call on many of the APIs that DynamoDB exposes. So let's say client is equal to Bodo3.resource. That's of type DynamoDB. Okay, perfect. The next thing we need to do is get a pointer to the table that we need to use. And if you recall the table that I defined, its name was transactions. So let's say table is equal to client.table and that's transactions. So any operations that you perform now using the table will be bound to the transactions table. Okay, so let's keep on moving. So now at this point, we're ready to actually interact with our table. So DynamoDB has many different types. They have strings, they have numbers, they have maps, they have lists, they have bytes, and they have string sets and number sets, many, many different types. And there's all sorts of documentation on all these types. Luckily, if you're using the language like Python, there's an auto conversion step. So if you define an object that is of type list that happens to contain some strings, when you're attempting to save that record into your table, it'll automatically convert into a string set or a list depending on what you define. So luckily you don't have to necessarily worry about that. Now, if this didn't make any sense, it will be very apparent in the actual example here when we define our input object. So let's actually do that now. So we're gonna define our input object and we're gonna say input. And if you recall, one of the mandatory fields is our partition key. Mine was called transaction ID and it needs to be of type string. And let's say it is string 31. 
and let's go ahead and define a second field and we're going to call it state and we're going to set that to a value of pending maybe pending authorization or pending some other process that needs to take place so so far this has been pretty simple we're using string types as the input so let's use something a little bit more interesting so let's say maybe there's some related transactions that are associated with this transaction right so let's say related transactions and that's going to be of type list and let's say the related ones are 32 33 and 34 okay and let's go a little bit further. Maybe you want to store customer information as part of this row. So let's say customer details. And this is going to be a map that contains other information. So we're going to say customer details is equal to open and close semicolon. Let's say the customer details will contain name. And the person's name is John Doe. And maybe we care about the account balance of this person. And maybe it's a number of $50. Uh, so this is basically all you need to do when you're defining your input object. Uh, the next step here is to actually call on the DynamoDB put item API. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say table dot put item, put underscore item rather. And the only absolutely mandatory field or the key that you need to provide into this method is the item field. And we want to set that to the input object that we just specified. Of course, you can define a variable here and just assign that to the result. And if this is a real application, you may want to look at the result to see if it was successful or if there was any other type of issue. Uh, ideally, if this is some production application, you want to do some try catch handling here to make sure that uh, if there's an exception, you can handle that appropriately. But in my case, um, this is just a fairly trivial example. So I'm not going to be doing any of that. So let's copy this all out now. And we're going to be going back to the console. And let's take that, paste that in. Everything looks good. Go to the top right here, click on save. We need to define a test event. So if we click on test, uh, we can just name our event here, whatever we want. And this is defining some input. Since we're not reading off the input in our Lambda function, this doesn't matter. So I'm going to leave this as default going to click on create now and we can go ahead and click on test and hopefully this will work first try and it was successful that's great if we go back to our DynamoDB tab and click on start search to scan our table we can see that the row is now present and you can see the transaction ID is what we specified and the customer details contains the map that I specified and you can see that it's using the notation that I was talking about so the account balance is the key the value is a number of type 50 and the second key is name and it's a string and the strings value is John Doe and similarly, this was a number list. So this is DynamoDB's means to say that this is a numbered list format. So N is the key and 32 is the value. Now, if you were to perform a get item or a query to retrieve this item from Dynamo, the same kind of reverse serialization happens. So you don't actually need to extract the N key in order to get the 32, you'll just get a basic list that has 32, 33, and 34. So it's a very convenient way of interacting with your table. So I wanted to point out something with regards to the insert behavior, and that is that if we went back and modified our code such that maybe we want to say this is Jane Doe, and we click on save, and we click on test, this is a default overwrite behavior. So if we click on start search again, we are by default overwriting. So that's something to keep in mind here. If you change your data and you're inputting with the same key value, regardless of the other data that's present, you're gonna be overwriting the data that's already there. So keep that in mind when you're writing your application. So just as a reminder, I'm gonna be providing a link to the code and the IAM policy that I used for this example in the description section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I have a great DynamoDB playlist that walks through a bunch of theoretical topics and also contains some step-by-step -step tutorials like this one. So thanks so much for watching, folks. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on next week's. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.